Hey everyone, welcome to another Power Apps tutorial video. My name is Barry and I'll be talking through um, a auto incrementing reference number, but uh, that's what we discussed in our previous video. In this video, we're going to be going deeper into how we can manipulate and add um, additional contact set number. In particular, uh, I had a request from one of our viewers just to have a look at how can we add the date in front of the reference number. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to look at how we can do that. We'll also implement a check to go, well, if the date changes, automatically update the date in the reference number and uh, reset the, num the incrementing number back down so that you know if it's like 23 and you got up to you know, someone raised like 5,500 tickets when it got to 2024 on the 1st of January it would uh, change the beginning number to 2024 and it will also change the reference number to starting at one again okay so every year it would count up and that might be useful for say your counting department um, you know you might be raising purchase orders or something and they want to see the year they want to see the number of purchase orders that kind of thing so it helps track that thing um, and uh, yeah so this is going to be about how um, I went around to achieve that and hopefully that will help you as well so uh, particularly in, in how we think about problems and how we then come up with solutions and power apps okay but before we jump in uh, our partner is powerappify.com head over there https www.powerappify.com you can get a whole lot of power app templates over there which you can download and then uh, install the zip files into as power app templates customize them quickly to meet your business requirements loads of documentation and all the stuff that you need to easily get them up and running uh, at really affordable prices as well so um, head over there and check out what apps are available with loads of different um, use cases there so um, let's hop into the tutorial so apologies for the infinite screen let me fix that cool and just before we jump into the tutorial just remember to if you're getting value hit up the like button please really helps the channel and please do subscribe um it's really great to have uh, everyone as a part of our learning journey um we're doing what we can to help you out in your power apps uh, journey um so do subscribe and like please Right, okay, here is the app that we've been working on. If you want to check out the link in the description below, if you want to go back and check out those tutorials, really helpful in terms of developing this ticketing app, creating a, ref a simple reference number and a form that someone will fill in and uh, send off to whatever department you want to send it to. So uh, let's just push play in here. I'll give you a quick demo. Okay, you can see here. We've got a request form with a drop down list and we want to send to HR. We have a request in there, upload an attachment and submit it over there. You can see over here, here's the reference number that we're creating. Um, so this is the new functionality. This is a really simple reference number, but this new functionality over here is um, adding the, the date in front of it and then adding uh, a number after the date, which increments. You can see it increments by by one every time I click on the button. Okay, so um, seems like it's easy to do. Um, it is relatively straightforward, but it took a little bit of thinking around the best way to do it. And the thing that you'll learn with Power Apps is always lots of ways of achieving something, um, and you want to become more efficient at doing it over time. Um, so uh, yeah, just remember, there's not any one way of doing something. There's lots of ways. Obviously, some ways are better than others, but um, yeah, that's what you'll learn as you go on. Okay, so uh, you know, there's other ways of doing what I've done here, but I'm showing you the way that I've uh, done this to achieve the uh, requirement. Okay, so um, I'm going to um, just jump over to a version of this app before i would made the changes and we can talk through what we're going to do. Okay, so I've opened up this app. Um, you can see we don't have the reference number of the button down here. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a button. Okay, and we're going to put in the button over here, and we'll just update the label to say um, create reference um, number with yeah. Okay, just to uh, add the size of eleven. There we go. We'll just leave it like that for now, and I'll click on it to add the text. Now I was going to type it out, 
but I think that might just take a little bit too long. So um, I'm just going to copy over the code and we can just talk through what it does. Okay. So on the button, the on select of the button, which means when the button's pushed, it's going to run this code. Okay, so, so first of all, let me just quickly uh, summarize what, what's happening here we, we've to generate this um, this ticket number over here. So I've got this SharePoint list. The, uh, it's got different uh, reference numbers for different apps. So each row is a different app. And this is the tracking ID for the app. So the one that we're doing here is SD underscore year. You can see I've added this column in here with the, the current year date uh, in there. And then I've removed the uh, letters from the beginning of the reference number. So this is the one that's been used over on this side. This uh, third one here is the new one that we're gonna create with the date in it. So that one you can see has got an SD at the front. This one doesn't have any, it will have the date at the front. Okay, so um, this is the SharePoint list. Uh, one thing I've learned is, you know, um, if you have a production one and you've got one SharePoint list for all your apps, if you make a mistake on one and it overwrites all the other values, then that might be an issue. So um, perhaps think about having a separate SharePoint list uh, for each app um, with the with tracking number for each app. Um, might save you some pain down the line, but uh, up to you. Cool, all right. So we've got in this new button over here and we're gonna talk through the um, coding behind the button that uh, helps us achieve what we wanna do. So first of all, we set some global variables. So these are variables um, that are, It's just remember, it's always easier to work with a variable than it is to type out these sort of long uh, um, functions within code. Uh, so where you can, set up a variable and then use the variable. Um, so, so I've set up two uh, new variables and when I put these uh, double quotes in here, it basically sets a null value, basically a blank value into that um, variable. So this is, I always start my variable names with var. So create a variable with a blank value called reference number with year, then create another one reference number without year. First of all, set them to blank. We'll update those values later on. <clears throat> then I also want to set two variables, one with today's year. So um, to get today's year, so if I, I just create, there's a fun, built in function called today. If I just put today, it actually outputs this date here. You can see the 29th of the 10th and with the time. Um, that's the format of that um, today. When you just use the year, you can see it just extracts the year from that and you're left with just a year value. That's in a, um, a number format. I, uh, I've i just added value in there just to make sure it's a number. And I don't, I, I, just because I didn't want it to ever be a date format, which could, um, lead to issues down the line. So I don't think you actually needed to put the value in, but you know, if you ever want to change the, like the format of something to a number, which is a value or a text, which is text, I could put text in front of it, then you can just put value or text. That takes it from a date format to a number format, or if you put text instead of value, then that would like, um, if I put text there, um, that would have replaced that as a text value, okay? But um, I want to keep it number value, and I did the same with this one over here. So I, in this one, I'm storing the current year, uh, sorry, the stored year, so that's this year that's in my tracker over here, and I am doing a lookup to go, go have a look in that SharePoint list called tracking number, where, find the row where uh, track ID is equal to SD underscore year. It's so going to be this row over here and then return me the value that's in the year column and then store it in this variable. So that's going to be um, 2023 because that's the year in there. If I had 1970 in there, then that would be 1970. Okay, so now I've got these variables set up. I'm going to use them later on. Now I'm going to um, this little uh, bit of code over here what it does is it checks um, my stored year, so the date, the year that's in my SharePoint list, with today's year, so the date I get from today, 
if the stored year is less than today's year, then what it's going to do is show a notification saying that your invoicing ref or whatever ref your reference number, not invoicing necessarily, your reference number has been updated with the current year and your invoice num your uh, reference numbering, not invoice numbering, reference numbering has been reset to 1001. Now, the reason I put a 1 at the front here is because if it starts at 0, it just um, it removes all the zeros and just starts at 1. Well, I want to keep it as um, uh, 5 digits, so I'm putting a 1 at the front. Whoever's using it will know there's always it always starts at 1001. That will be the, the first issued reference number for a given year. And then notification warning type is 4000. I'll show you this in action. So it's basically doing an if statement, checking the years. If the year stored is uh, less than today's year, send out a notification that it's going to be updated. And then the next one, update if, is, is basically uh, similar to patch, but it, if something's already there, it looks for that row, it does a comparison, and if if uh, if it's uh, the logic works out, then it updates that uh, row. So let's have a look at this. Update if. We update the, if our tracking number SharePoint list, we're having a look where the track ID is equal to S, uh, uh, SD year, so this row over here. And it's gonna go and, so where that track ID is SD year, and if var stored key is less than var today's year, okay, so it compares those two values. If, if it's uh, the stored year is 2023 and today is 2024, that's gonna be less, so that'll be Yes, that is true. Then it will update today's the year to today's year and reset the, the number here from whatever it is to 1001, okay? So if that was 20 if it's 2022 and now it's 2023, it will update this to 2023 and reset this to 001. I'll show you it in action uh, just now. Okay. Cool. All right. So just remember that and then over here we've got um, update the variable uh, reference number without year to the current value stored in the SharePoint list. Okay, because we want to um, uh, use this down here. We uh, we want to share uh, update that with the so reference number without year. We want to get this number over here just and store it into a variable. And then we want to um, take that year and concatenate it with today's year okay so we're going to take this out we're going to get today's um, year and we're going to make the reference number using concatenate what concatenate does is it takes any uh, numbers and it brings them together okay so if i've got like in one field i've got like hello and then another field i've got barry uh it'll then become one word, hello Barry, if I concatenate those two fields. So over here I've got the year, I've got a dash, and I've got uh, the reference number without the year, and that's going to bring them all together. It's going to be the year dash reference number all as one string. Cool. All right. And then uh, it's going to go back in and it's going to uh, update just this number to the next one up so that when I uh, create another one, it's going to read that number and it's going to be one uh, plus one than it was on the previous number. Okay, and um, it's also going to update the year with today's year in there. So it'll just keep that uh, that year current. Okay, so um, hopefully that makes sense. It's basically just keeping these up to date, adding one on here, keeping the year up to date. If when it reads this, first of all, and it is one less than today's year, then it will reset this number to uh, to one again. Okay, so that it starts again. I'll show you it in action, just so that you can see how it works. Okay, so we've got that reference number. We first need to add in a new um, label, text label over here, for our new reference number with the year. We want it to be red, just so we know it's a different color. We also want it to be um, 11. And we want it to be 
uh, var reference number with you. So we just whatever the values in there. Cool. So that's what we want the value to be. There's nothing in here. We're going to play it and we're going to see how it works. Okay. Let's just have it checked on here. You can see it's on 26 and the year is 2023. Let's create it. Cool. All right. So you can see it's taken the value 2026. Now, because that code is running in the background, that would have automatically updated this to 27 so that the next time it reads it, it's going to be 27 and then updates it. So, okay. So it uses the one, uh, the value before it updates. Okay. Right. So then we have the, the re new reference number. It's got the date and then the number now. Yeah, you can see it carries on incrementing. It'll c just carry on incrementing as many times as you push that. So let's say the date changes. Okay, I'm going to pretend now, um, you know, it's 20. Let me just go in here and edit. Let's pretend it's 2022. December was the last time it created. Just, yeah, the, the last day of December, 2022. It's now the 1st of January. Let's pretend it's the 1st of January and the dates changed to 2023. So let's, we know it's 2023 already, but um, yeah, well, this is what would happen on the 1st of January. We come in <coughs> and we create a new reference number. And it hasn't worked for some reason. Just one second while I go in and troubleshoot. Okay, I think I know what I did wrong. So sorry, I've come back in here. Um, we're just going to go back into 2022. I, <coughs> I hadn't exited um, from from this list. Just just so you know that this change. Let's just um, add that to uh, make that number a bit higher. Okay, so let's say we've got uh, 10234 in here. I'm going to exit grid view. I hadn't done that before, so it hadn't saved. You can see I've cha I've changed the year to 2022 going back to that example of um, you know first day of January what would happen um, I, I need to just come in here and refresh this uh, I would do this in the button so you won't need to do this when you're running the app just to make sure it works so um, now watch for the, the change here I'm gonna go back in and play it okay so here we go um, your reference number has been updated with the current year so it's, it's, it's noted that the year has changed from 2022 to 2023. Let's put that down to um, 1001. Okay, and then we'll keep counting up. Okay, until it gets to the the first day of the next year and we'll do the same thing when it comes to 2024. So it's self-managing, self-updating, and that's how you, um, you get to, uh, to work with a reference number that, that begins with the date. So hopefully you found that, that useful, that code. Uh, let me know um, if any of it didn't make sense and we can run through it in a bit more detail. But hopefully, um, you know, we, we used a number of functions there. So <coughs> really useful ones, <coughs> excuse me. So uh, what was it? Uh, global variables, you know, um, learn those always useful as well as uh, context variables uh, if statements always been used um, uh, update if really useful as well um, and then yeah just the concatenate one as well bringing things together and yeah so if you've got other use cases for your reference number hopefully you can use all the techniques and um, that we've uh, used to just generate these two um, numbers um and uh, don't forget to smash up the likes if you found that useful otherwise we'll catch you next week uh with a new video speak to you then cheers bye